Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about evaluating an expression. While evaluating an expression means we can evaluate each of this operation on an expression and it can be done with two of these ways. One is the materialization and another is the pipelining. We will discuss each of this case differently. First, we will know about the evaluation of expression. How to evaluate an expression? That means after that we have written a query and had made all the inputs from the relation, then how way or this optimized way or an unoptimized way it will be processed. So we should know this one as first. So each of the operation we need to take care of and then see as the result of on operation how it can be affected on this other one. So this can be done in two ways as we have already described, materialization and the pipelining. First we will discuss about materialization. Now the materialization help us to store the each intermediate result in a temporary relation and that relation can be built to see that whether the query can be optimized further or not. If it is seen that the query that has built in a temporary relation has already in an unoptimized way, so we cannot just go further. We can either evaluate that expression in an unoptimized way, or otherwise we can just avoid the situation to go for a better result from the query processing. Now this process is known as materialization because we are taking a material on each of this temporary query and then put it inside a relation also that is temporary. Now let us look at this query. So this is the query we are having. Now we can look at this that we are first to have the joining on department and instructor then fetch the instructors on the basis that which is the building that belongs to Watson and then from this one we can fetch the queries on the name of this one. That means name of the department which belongs to the Watson department building and also having the joining on the building department and instructor. Now how to put the materialization in this one? Now we can use a materialization in the following way. First we have all the department relation. Now from the department relation we need to select the building that is Watson. After that we have fetched all the building that is Watson belonging to the department relation that we need to join with with this instructor relation. So there is instructor relation. See we are joining only the tuples from the department relation which building is equals to Watson. And now we will perform joining on this two. Now from this joining we can select the name or project the name on that final result. So the final result will consist of projecting the name. See now we have divided one, two, three and four parts in this way. So this is the materialization of a particular query so that we can have if any fault in any of this discrepancy or this levels, then we can find it just like looking at which of the levels that we are having the discrepancy and then optimize it in that way. So in the materialized definitions or this evaluation of expression, if there is in our number of the memory that we can have and FR is the number of memory that we can fit in it, then NR by FR is the number of six that we can perform because FR are this one, two, three, four and five and NR is the whole relation on result. So we can have if there are 10 tuples 10 by five, two levels that is level 1 and that is level 2 or 0, 1 and 2. So two levels that we can find on these two relations. 
So we can have NR by effort number of levels of materialization and evaluation. Now, to enhance this materialization, we can even improve the double buffering. What do you mean by a double buffering? That means we can add an output buffer along with the input buffer so that we can store the result while having the result of another query being calculated. Say for instance, if we have the department relation and then selecting well the building from Watson, we can generate the instructor relation along with the result that we are storing from the building equals to Watson. So there is an output buffer that is associated with this query, whereas an input buffer that is associated with this level. So now we can add this one as double buffering. So the input buffer will calculate the result while the output buffer will put the result and the input buffer will perform the next calculations. So in this way, materialization of evaluation can be developed. But the main problem with the materialization is the iterator problem. You know, if there are block size of BR on a relation R and BB is the buffer size, then we will need BR by BB number of block sizes for the block transfer. Now the iterator problem is that one evaluation is being expressed and the evaluation's result will get into this other one as a fetching or an input to this other result. So how we can achieve this? If we made that each of this instruction can be in pipeline and then we can add the result and the end of the pipeline. Like that we have opened a tap and each of the pipe is getting the water. And from the end we are getting all the waters in the buckets. So there is no need that one bucket will be filled up then it will filling up another one. That is the case of the materialized of evaluation. So now we will use the technique of pipelining, that is every instruction will be evaluated spontaneously and simultaneously with each other. And after that all the results will be get back together to form the final result. So there are two types of pipelining as we can see. There are demand driven pipelining and also produce driven pipelining. The demand driven pipelining is we will start first with the tuple RI. Now if RI is suggested and can have all the attribute values satisfying the result, say for instance building equals to Watson, we can have the RI number of tuples. Now from this RI we need to select that which of the tuples we assign to instructor. Say for an example, if instructor also has got some operation to it, like say the instructor ID equals to 501. So we can perform it along we are performing the building equals to Watson and that is the main concept of pipelining. So the demand driven pipelining starts with the build input, looks for the tuple that belongs to that input and then to the input among the demand, that is if there is any demand for the pipelining, it will do the pipelining. So it will wait for the demand that another query or the inner query needs another type of instruction that can be done within the level of that instruction. If the instruction is available to us, then we will perform the pipelining. So that is the basic idea of demand driven pipelining. Now what is producer driven pipelining? The producer driven pipelining is there is no wait for the tuple to be generated from this instructor relation. It will start the pipelining from the very first. So while the building equals to Watson is being pipelined with the instructor relation generator that is being pipelined with this department relation. So that means along the two way, the department relations fetching with the selection as well as the instructor relation projection will be done at the pipelining. Now to perform this type of pipelining without the demand that is being fitted to the instruction, we can have the iterator that we can achieve with this demand driven pipelining. Now the demand driven pipelining can be achieved through this producer driven pipelining with the help of this iterator signals. Now we have three of this iterator functions. The first one is open. 
Now when talk about open, it will open the next instruction into the query. It can be an inner instruction, it can be a parallel instruction, both can be opened by this open iterator. Following is the next iterator. The next iterator finds which is the next instruction that we want to open. So open is basically based on this next operation or the iterator. Finally is the close iterator. When one of the partial functions or the partial query is being solved, then we need to solve the and close the iterator for that particular partial query. So we can do this by close iterator for that partial query. So in this way, pipelining can be achieved with a very improved result than the materialization, which needs that every result to be stored into a temporary relation. Now in the pipelining, we couldn't store or we want to store the pipelined result as a final result, not the intermediate result. Now we will know about double pipelining. Now the double pipelining supports that the pushing and pulling on the pipeline. As we know that if we have opened the tap so where water is being pushed down to the pipelining and the bucket is pulling down the pipelining. So here also just like this, as the producer driven organization or this pipelining produce an eagerly and lazily on that pipelining tuples. So all the tuples have been generated from the very first. We do not wait for the demand. So this is known as a pushing lazily or pulling lazily pipelining. So what is the benefit of a double lining pipelining? The double lining pipelining supports that the outer one that is the leftmost query that we are having can have the command over the rightmost or the inner query. So the inner query will be solved first and then it will be fetched the result as an outer query. So the pipelining cannot support the inner and outer query or a nested query solving other than having the double pipelining. So the double pipelining go in, in and out both the ways. That means while the result is being fetched out for this inner query, it has gone to the outer query. So now we will see that how we can solve this double lining or the pipeline process. So here we will have from two of the relations tuples working together, not just by starting at each of the tuple. Now we will describe the algorithm. First we have taken for this R and S both the relationships as done equals to false because nothing has been done for R and as well as S relation. Now that we have taken both the R and S relations as null because nothing is containing in it, we will evaluate each of the expression and then put the expressions in this R and S. So while we have this done true for R and S, that is not done, not is the complement of false that is true for each of this case, we will begin this while loop. So if the queue is empty, that means all the queue and no other relational expression is there in this queue for the pipelining. So we should wait for until and unless there is a non-empty queue. That means the empty queue is resulting in a not. That means false. Now my T becomes the top entry in queue. That is the first one in this queue. Now means t goes to end r, that means the starting of the queue is the ending of the r relation, that means we have finished with this r relation. So if t equals to end r, then done r equals to true. That means we have already performed the relational r. Now if t is not equals to r, then we need to check that if t equals to s or not. If it is the end of s, then we should write that done s equals to true. That means we have done all the relations from s.
Now, if also R has not been end and S has not been end, then we are checking that if T is from input R. Then first we will include T into the set of R because T is belonging to this R relation. And my result will consider the R as well as this result. So the result you can see the result with the T that is belonging to R joined with this S. Now if the T is not end R, not end S and also it is not from R, then it is obviously from the relation S. So we need to perform the same for this relation S. Now here we can see as the relation was R and S, so here I have inputted T with S, but as my R now belongs to the R and T belongs to S, so that is why I have used R joined with T, that means T is belonging to S. So the final result will always have R as the left relation and S as the right relation. Now if we take that there are R0 and S0 and R1 and S1 for each of the tuples from the relation R and S. So R0 and S0 can easily be propped to S1 and R1 if there is a double lining pipelining because in double line pipeline the input from R0 to S1 will happen and concur properly with the simultaneous S0 to R1. Now if we have R0 and S1 as our starting. It will also support the pipelining on an evaluation because the R0 can now probe S0 and the S1 can now probe R1. So in this way also there is an inverted result that we can have as a double pipelining result. So the double pipelining evaluate more frequently and more smoothly an optimized result onto the expression than this materialization because of the two reasons. The first one is the simultaneous access to all the queries even if it is a nested or inner query. And the second one is it uses the approach of the iterator that is it can open, close and go to the next expression while the materialization has to depend on the tree-like hierarchy key, while the children live in result can be the input only to the parent result. In this way, the materialization and also this pipelining help us to evaluate an expression for the query. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.